A new human study has just been published, and they concluded that they saw significant improvements in muscle strength, so around 12%, with intake of urolithin A. So let's go through the new paper and see if it stacks up. Just for a bit of context, there was another urolithin A paper that was published at the beginning of this year, and it found that urolithin A supplementation, it may improve muscle performance of older adults, so between the age of 65 to 90 years old. And overall, that trial suggested that urolithin A, it may be a promising approach to counteract age-associated muscle decline. However, further study is needed to confirm the role of urolithin A supplementation in healthy aging. And this new study, it looked at untreated trained adults aged between 40 to 64, so the younger age group. Let's start from the top. The paper is titled Urolithin A Improves Muscle Strength, Exercise Performance and Biomarkers of Mitochondrial Health in a Randomized Trial of Middle-Aged Adults. So that's quite an ambitious title. The paper starts by saying that there's currently no effective interventions to counteract age-associated muscle decline. However, mitochondrial dysfunction, it is a hallmark of aging, and it's intricately linked to age-related deterioration of skeletal muscle. Therefore, improving mitochondrial health it might be a viable strategy to improve muscle health. The trouble is though, as we age, our muscles start to collect old and damaged mitochondria. So the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cells, but if they're not as efficient as what they once used to be, they can release all sorts of oxidants that damage the surrounding tissues. Which brings us on to mitophagy, which is the removal and recycling of dysfunctional mitochondria, and then replace them with new mitochondria. And urolithin A, which is produced in the gut microbiome in some people, it has been shown to induce mitophagy and improve mitochondrial function in preclinical models of aging and disease. In a nutshell, the idea is that by taking urolithin A, hopefully that will clear away old damaged mitochondria and then promote the production of new mitochondria. That way, if we're improving the powerhouses of our muscles, hopefully we can improve muscle performance. That's the theory and that's what this paper is trying to figure out. So overall, the current study it is designed as a proof of concept investigation of the efficacy of long-term oral supplementation with urolithin A on physiological endpoints in middle-aged adults. So I really like that. They're focusing on muscle performance. The study population consisted of untrained adults aged between 40 and 64. They also needed to be overweight and had low physical endurance as measured by VO2 max. So these are quite unhealthy people and I like that the study has selected those unhealthy people. If we are going to see a benefit with urolithin A supplementation, then we should see even greater benefits for unhealthy people, and it just means that it's easier to run trials like this. 253 participants were screened, but only 88 people successfully met all of the screening inclusion and exclusion criteria, so it's a very select population that the study is trialing, so we have to make sure that we don't overinterpret these results to the wider population. At the start of the trial, there were no significant differences differences between the groups, and this is a great thing. We want to make sure that we're comparing apples to apples, so at the start of the study, we want both groups to be roughly the same, and that way we can truly see what the effect is of urolithin A supplements compared to placebo. Starting with safety, urolithin A was found to be safe and well tolerated during the four-month supplementation period, so that's important. At the beginning of any investigation into a new molecule, we need to make sure it's safe. It goes on to say that muscle Muscle strength measures were positively impacted across the different dosages of urolithin A tested. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's have a look at the raw data. When we have a look at muscle strength testing, we can see that the placebo group generally, over the four month period, their muscles became weaker. Their hamstring average peak torque actually became 10% weaker over the four month period, which is a bit of a red flag to me. Generally, if people enter trials like this, they want to improve their muscle performance and strength. So the fact that the placebo group worsened by about 10%, I can't really explain that. You might see declines like that in 90 to 100 year olds, but but not in 40 to 64 year olds. And this is important because we're comparing placebo to the urolithin A groups. So if the placebo group is worsening their muscle performance, it makes it really tricky to interpret the data. So yes, when we compare the placebo groups to the urolithin A groups, we can see a difference. The urolithin A groups, they did improve their muscle performance. But again, it's really difficult to interpret that data to see a true significant effect if the placebo group has worsened their muscle performance 
performance by such a large amount. When we move to aerobic endurance testing, the primary outcome for this study was peak power output. So yes, we can see a trend towards improvement in the urolithin A groups, but this doesn't reach statistical significance. Once again, we can't be sure that we're improving peak performance with urolithin A. There was also something strange when they measured total body composition in a DEXA scan. So we could see again that the placebo group worsened the overall lean mass. But the same thing happened with the urolithin A group when they took 1000 milligrams. Again, I can't really interpret this data. Overall, when we have a look at the raw data, it's really tricky to interpret. The placebo group generally worsened their muscle strength performance, and by quite a significant margin. When people go into muscle performance trials like this, generally they want to improve their muscle strength. So they might start exercising, they might start eating a better diet. This is actually what was seen in the study that was published at the beginning of this year, where they found no significant benefits of urolithin A over placebo because of a higher than anticipated placebo effect. What the new study did find though is that urolithin than A, it did reduce CRP levels at both dosages. This is important. CRP is a general marker of inflammation, so it's quite cool to see that urolithin A, by potentially removing old mitochondria, it may reduce our overall levels of inflammation. More studies are needed to confirm this. To sum things up, one of the main limitations of the study is that the primary endpoint was not significantly different between the urolithin A groups compared to placebo. Despite this limitation, the data obtained with this trial will help design future, well-powered, confirmatory studies focused on muscle strength and aerobic endurance outcomes. Overall, I'm stoked that trials like this are being run. For me, one of the crucial things about aging is the muscle decline. If we can find ways to prevent that muscle decline, we can reduce the need for things like rest homes and private hospitals. It's why I'm running my own rapamycin clinical study looking at muscle performance. For me, this current study, it gives the justification for future, larger, longer duration studies to actually see what urolithin A does to human muscle performance and mitochondrial function in older adults. I'm not going to start urolithin A supplements just yet. For me, I don't think we've got enough data to support its use, but I really want to support trials like this, again, to figure out will urolithin A actually improve muscle strength performance. That will be so exciting if it proves to be true. So please let me know in the comments section, what did you think about this study and are you going to start taking urolithin A or are you going to wait for more research? A massive thank you to all of the patrons who support the channel and if you haven't already please check out my clinical trial fundraiser for rapamycin. Until next time, thanks very much.